A growing number of patients in Singapore are opting for knee preservation. The surgery is for those who suffer from knee arthritis, which is a joint condition from sports injuries or from being obese. SGH says the number has doubled from nearly 50 cases in 2020 to about 100 cases last year. So let's crack the issue a little further with Dr. Lee Kong Hui from the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at SGH. Dr. Lee, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Uh, give us a bit of context. How common are knee problems in Singapore? What's the main reason behind this? Okay, so knee uh, arthritis tend to affect about 10% of our population in Singapore. And this number is set to grow in the years to come. Because number one, our young adults are getting injured at an earlier age and arthritis don't set in immediately. It sets in about 10 to 20 years later. And number two, uh, our patients are getting heavier and with the increased weight, you know, they tend to put more pressure on the knee joint and as such, this will wear out their knee joint earlier. So with that, yeah, this the 10% uh, figure was taken quite some years ago, but in years to come, I, I believe that the figures were, were set to increase. Right, so you gave us a glimpse there of what the profile uh, of a typical sufferer of knee problems is like. Um, but in terms of, you know, before we even talk about surgery, what kinds of changes do you think uh, he or she can, can, can make to his lifestyle to sort of, you know, ward off surgery in the first place? Yeah, so basically you have to think of your knee like it's like a car tire. So one thing you have to do is uh, reduce your weight, you know, make sure you are... If you're if you're the heavier weight, please uh, lose some weight. Every kg counts. So with that, uh, you relieve the pressure of your knee joint. Secondly, um, basically, if you do have knee pain, one of the things is that we do have to exhaust all non-surgical uh, interventions. So things like uh, physiotherapy, going for very doing it diligently at home by yourself. We can take some supplements and painkillers. Should all these fail, then we then we can talk about surgery. Yeah, so always remember non-conservative conservative measures first, non-surgical, failing which, then we go for surgery. Mm. And, and in, in the context of surgery, you know, th th we're talking to you about knee preservation surgery, which is not something we often hear about compared to knee replacement surgery. So yeah. give us a sense of, of what the difference yeah. is like between the two. Okay, so for knee preservation surgeries, um, it is basically a group of surgeries that aims to extend the longevity of your uh, native knee joint. So that includes realignment surgeries, cartilage transplants, meniscus transplants. All these, you know, we aim to extend basically the COE of your knee, of your one arm knee. So for as long as possible, so to avoid uh, or even delay you in having uh, knee replacements in the future. So for knee replacement, basically it just uh, involves, you know, uh, replacing your entire knee joint with a metal implant. And that pre pretty much is like, you know, buying a new car. So my role as a knee preservation surgeon is basically to extend the COE of your knee. Mm. Make sure that, you know, you will drag it out as long as you can before you need or even hopefully avoid uh, you having a knee replacement surgery in the future. Uh, are there people whom you think would be more suitable for having a knee preservation surgery uh, compared to, you know, a, a total knee replacement, for example? Yeah, so... Definitely it's the younger age group, ages between 40 to 60. This group of patients will definitely benefit from knee preservation surgery. So you may ask, well, why not do a knee replacement surgery in uh, such an age group of uh, patients? So the, the reason is that uh, this young group of patients will most probably outlive the lifespan of their metal implants. And when that happens, so assuming if you do it at the age of like 45 or 50, so and you do a total knee replacement. So we, we are worried or concerned that when you reach 70, 75, you may need another surgery to replace the worn out metal uh, implants. And when a revision knee surgery happens, usually we have to use bigger and more extensive uh, metal implants uh, for you. And that usually is uh, quite a arduous, uh, quite complex surgery and, and lots of I mean, higher risk of complications, et cetera, et cetera, mm. and poorer patient satisfaction. So, so as best as you can, if we have to do a knee replacement, we try to do it for patients above the age 60, 65, because the average Singapore lifespan, Singaporean lifespan is about 85. Mm -hmm. So if you do at the age of 60, 65, hopefully, you know, this uh, knee implant will last you to the end of time. Yeah, and you know, just now we were talking about knee preservation surgery numbers, you know, we, we saw that, you know, there were about 50 cases in 2020, and then 100 cases last year. Uh, do we have a sense of why we are seeing such a, a dramatic increase? Is it because people were sort of putting it off because of all the hospital restrictions, 
Uh, or is it simply because you know people aren't, aren't moving as much and and you know knee problems are setting in? Oh uh, no! Basically, I mean, right now, finally, we are able to offer a viable you know treatment option to this uh, selected group of uh, patients, youngish patients, 40, 40 to sixty. You know, uh, basically, a group of patients who are not ideal candidates uh, for having their knee replacements done. So, young patients. Uh, second group of patients are those patients with uh, who are not medically indicated. I mean, suitable to go for any replacement surgery, such as poorly controlled, poorly controlled diabetics, uh, immunocompromised patients, patients who have poor skin. That we worry that we, when we put the metal implants in, they will get infected. And the last group I would I would say is that there is a group of patients out there who just refuse for whatever reason their preference or bad experiences to have their knee replaced, uh, to have a knee replacement done. So for such a group of patients, finally, we are able to offer them something, you know, to elevate their painful needs. And I guess words gets around and the numbers start to grow. Yeah, all, all to solve the issue of, of knee problems. Uh, Dr. Wow. Lee, thanks very much for joining us this evening and talking to us through these knee preservation surgery techniques. Dr. Lee Kong Hui there from the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, which runs a mm -hmm. knee preservation service at SGH.